idea. What kind of uh, coaching history do you have against Tubby Smith? Uh, head coach assistant? I don't know if you've uh, faced him as a head coach. I don't think so, no. But you used to follow me around. No, no Tubbies. No. I mean, when you were at Louisville, or just talk about him a little bit. I mean, did you face him at Oh, Louisville? we're friends from being on the road yeah. and stuff. We both worked for Coach Patino. Uh, he bought me dinner one time, the first time I ever beat Coach Patino. He bought me dinner and said, uh, welcome, me, welcome me to his club. He had a one-man club. He was, the only, he was the only Rick Patino assistant to have ever won. So I saw him on the road and he waved me. He, he said, come on, I got to buy you dinner. We're, you know, we're, all, we're all checking into a Marriott, tired, watching games all day. So it was great. That's why I got to know him. So we, you know, from there I was sat with him. He's one of the nicest people in our business. Period. Like, a great, obviously a great coach. Um, I think if he gets Memphis to the tournament, it'll be the most. He'll set the record for taking the most schools to the NCAA tournament. He's just a great person. He's great for our game. He's a great person. And he bought me dinner. Welcomed me to the club. Is that still a two-man club? It might be. It's a thin club. Yeah. What, is the, uh, what is it about Memphis that makes them uh, dangerous? Uh, well, think our last four opponents have winning records. So uh, I think, you know, in Memphis's case, Lawson and his, you know, both the Lawson brothers and Crawford's a, is a veteran, almost maybe a four year starter. Uh, the Lawson's got tremendous talent, both of them. Uh, Crawford's won a lot of games in college. They're athletic, they're long, they're fast. They, I would say, you know, that uh, their transition ability to convert bad offense to your, convert our, your bad offense to layups at the other end is great because their speed, their athleticism, they're really good in that, in that aspect. That along with both the Lawson guys, we got, uh, it, you know, they're very, very talented offensive players. They pass it well, they shoot it well, they score inside and out. So they pose, you know, they pose some problems. Is Lawson, uh, he the best player, best talent in the league? I don't know. He's young. He's only 19. You know, uh, I would say, you know, up to date, we haven't played him yet, but Ojale to me is the guy that's played, probably played as well as anybody we've played against all year. So you've got the two co -player, preseason co-players of the year. I mean, can you talk about what Troy has done for your team and maybe what Lawson does for his? Um, I mean, other than the obvious, uh, you know, I think Troy's intangibles are the, the key for us. Uh, when you got a four-year point guard, uh, you know, I would say the big, you know, on the floor, I would, Troy's, a, he, he takes care of the ball, and he does an excellent job of running our team. I have to prod him at times to, to be aggressive for his own offense. Uh, and he's a big reason why we're third in the country in assist-to-turnover ratio. Uh, and, that, and then the intangibles, you know, it's a, a, being a senior, Wanting to have a great year, um, you know, having some having some neat things in our grasp and our sights, uh, you know, make, trying to win 30 games. I think 31 is the record here. Um, you know, those are all things he's he's cognizant of uh, trying to have a great year. Uh, you know, now Lawson. He can score inside and out. He's a great passer. He knows how to get fouled. He's just got, he's he, he's a he's a I mean, really really uh, skilled offensive player. He's got a great feel for the game. I love him because he never shoots a fadeaway. I love guys that don't fade away. He shoots six free throws a game, which is a lot for a big guy. Cause it's not like you're blowing by people off the dribble. So he really knows how to get his defender off balance and get fouled. Uh, he gives up. I mean, he's. At 19 years old, he's a he's an extremely talented offensive player, and he's pretty adept shot blocker too. He's got long arms and good timing. He doesn't do it uh, with uh, he he with jumping. I, in fact, I'm going to show Nasir Brooks some of his shot blocking. 
because he uh, he just taps it like Bill Russell days. Based on what you said to Gresh, you don't think he'll be player of the year? Oh, I don't know. I don't even think about stuff like that. I said up to this point of the guys we've played against in our league, Ojale's probably had to this. Up to this point. I don't know. I don't even don't know. Don't care. I know you don't. What is uh, Jaron's status? Is he going to be back? Jaron's status, uh, he was suspended for curfew violation the other night. Other than that, that's all I have to say. I'm not saying anything else other than he was suspended the other night for a curfew violation. Anybody got anything else? You guys, uh, how's your health? Not you personally. But team. I slept. I got a lot of sleep this weekend, so I feel better. Really Man. focused on sleep. Is everybody I think it's good to get. Oh, uh, you know, I think it's good for us. We needed a couple of. Game was over at two o'clock, so you know, the guys got 48 hours out of here. Yesterday, all we did was shoot and lift. So, uh, you know, I think if you if you got morale problems and you're 24 and three, something's really wrong. But uh, I, I I think it is important, and I've been trying to focus on it for the last two months of trying to keep these guys fresh, mentally and physically, for March. So, knock on wood, because. You got to be, you look around the country, there's been a lot of bad injuries. Uh, you know, people say you got to make a run in March. Well, if you want to make a run in March, you need to be healthy. And you, then you need to be fortunate to have some breaks go your way. So, but you can try to control it as a coach by how much you practice. Make sure your guys are getting enough body rest. Uh, you know, a lot of it goes back to the, to the luck side of it. Speaking of health. I did not see it, no, uh, but I heard about it this morning, you know. I'm mad at him for coaching the second half, but I don't think he can, cares what I think or anybody else for that matter. <laughs> that's, that's the only guy I know would go into AFib and coach the second half, but that's why he's Alexander the Great. His nickname in our business is the Viking. He's a true Viking.